Hello everybody, welcome back to another video, and today we are doing our XFL Week 2 game predictions, and so, yeah, um, last week, um, in the pick em, you know, just straight up, I picked 3-1, and one. I went 3-1, and one and my dad went 2-2, two and two. um, on the spread, betting against the spread, I went two and two. My dad went three and one. On the over under, my dad went three and one, and I went two and two. And so, yeah, that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be covering the spread, the over under, and the game winner in general. So, yeah, word of the day is bagel, and let's get into it. So, starting off week two, Thursday night, Battle Hawks versus Sea Dragons. And this is an interesting one. So both of these teams both scored 18 points last week. But the Battle Hawks obviously won and the Sea Dragons lost in a close, close fashion. And you know, it's just a matter of how you finish a game. I mean the Sea Dragons are on the one yard line. They have a chance to win. If they score, game is probably over. If they don't score, game is over. And the defenders make a huge stop. Ben DiNucci fumbles. And, you know, the game just doesn't go their way. As for the Battle Hawks, they were down 3-15. to 15, Had a big comeback late in the fourth quarter with like a minute to go. Absolutely huge. And now that brings us to what will happen in Week 2. So... The Sea Dragons obviously had the tough loss. Ben DiNucci makes the fumble. That's the starting quarterback in a tough game, in a close game. The person you want to trust most and your quarterback fumbles on the one-yard line. That is definitely going to cause some trust issues. You don't want to do that week one. You don't want to get that mindset started in the locker room that your quarterback is, you know, not trustable, not that guy that you look up to that you're, you know, you know, <laughs> just not that, just not that guy that you believe in that you think is going to get you there. Um, and then as for AJ McCarron, obviously started off week one with a bang. They finished the game really well after starting off really bad, showed good leadership, and you know they won the game. Now AJ McCarron is trusted, and the team trusts each other, and they work well with each other, and they're excited to go into week two. And I'm sure you know the Sea Dragons are excited to go into week two as well. But after that, it's just. The chemistry is going to be a little bit more off than what the Battle Hawks will have. And so I have to take the St. Louis Battle Hawks in this one. I think their offense will start a little bit faster. And, you know, the Sea Dragons just did not play well late in that game against the Defenders. And, you know, if the Battle Hawks <laughs> play great in the fourth quarter again, I think they can beat the Sea Dragons in this one. So, yeah. As for the spread and the over-under, I am taking the Battle Hawks plus 2.5, of course, because, you know, I'm taking them without the points. And I'm going to take the over 36 and a half. So will my dad. He agrees with me on every single pick that I just freaking said. So, yeah. Next up, we have the Defenders versus the Vipers. And, you know, this is an interesting game. The Vipers, very, very close game against the Arlington Renegades. Couldn't get it done on the two-point conversion. And, you know, threw some pick sixes in the third quarter. Yet again, causing a little bit of mistrust with that quarterback position. The guy, you know, you think is going to get you there. And he's just, he kind of sells the game like that. Um, you know, there's kind of a thing going on. We heard on the mics at the end of the game on the two-point conversion when he missed the pass. Talking to his wide receiver, I don't think that's really too much, but, you know, just kind of shows you, you know, how that's going to feel. Um, and as for the defenders, obviously had a huge win. Um, not sure what they're doing with Jordan Te'amu and De'Eric King. Uh, I mean, they're playing Jordan Te'amu, but sometimes they put De'Eric King in and just run him, and I don't know. It, it gets me a little confused sometimes. But, yeah, didn't do too much in the passing game, but... You know, their defense still lit it up. Joseph, I don't know what his first name is. Number 15, Joseph, the cornerback for the defenders, went absolutely crazy with two interceptions. And I think they can definitely do that again against the Vipers in this game. 
assuming they get a pass rush. Um, only had two sacks. Uh, ben Nucci threw 54 passes uh, last week, and you know they only got two sacks. So they had 54 plays where they could possibly get a sack. They only sacked them twice. They're going to need a little bit more pass rush in this game, but if they get that pass rush, it is over for the Vipers. Because the Vipers, I watched their game against the Renegades. Luis Perez has some issues, I would say, with his footwork. Um, it, it just doesn't look like that NFL, you know, traditional style pocket quarterback. He doesn't look comfortable. He just kind of runs around in it. And it's not... It's just not a professional look, and I think the uh, defenders can definitely capitalize on that, make him get happy feet, rush him to make a pass. It goes to Joseph, and it's intercepted, and I think they can do that a lot and definitely capitalize off that in this game. And so I am going to take the defenders at Vegas to beat the Vipers. And now for my Vegas picks, which is the spread, of course, and everything, um... So, Vipers are favored by three points. So, obviously, I'm going to take the defenders if I'm taking them straight up. And the spread is 36.5. So, I'm going to take the under. I know both teams combined scored 42 points last week. But I think they were really just defensive games. Um, You know, the, uh, the defenders had a pick six. Had some interceptions to put them close to the goal line. You can't assume that that's going to happen every week. I think these teams are definitely more defensive oriented. Um, and so I have to take the under in this one. However, my dad is going to take the defenders, the defenders, and the over. So, yeah. Next up, we have the Brahmas versus the Guardians. And, yeah, so, the Brahmas started off week one against the Battle Hawks. Played a really, really good game, in my opinion. I just think they didn't necessarily have the chemistry down. You know, there were a couple drops, you know, a couple just lineman mistakes. And, you know, I think they could definitely fix that by week two. You know, they have a week of playing together under their belt. I think the Brahmas honestly do win that game if they catch more passes Jack Cohen was putting it on the money, and the receivers just could not grab the ball. And I think it'll definitely be better next week now that these receivers are used to playing with Jack Cohen. And, you know, Jack Cohen's used to playing with the receivers. And, of course, they're going up against the Guardians, who just benched Paxton Lynch. It's going to be hard for a team to, you know, have a new quarterback after just practicing all training camp, which is about three weeks <laughs> with Paxton Lynch. Um, obviously it was going to be hard in week one, and now you're just making it even harder on yourself in week two. I think the Brahmas definitely played a good game against the Battle Hawks. I just think the Battle Hawks got hot there at the end, and that was unfortunate. So I'm taking the Brahmas in this one at Orlando, and so is my dad. So, yeah. Next up, we got the spread and over-under picks. So in this game, we have the Brahmas versus the Guardians. The Guardians are plus three, so the Brahmas are favored by three points in this game. I'm still taking the Brahmas. I still think they have just a big advantage in this game going up against the Guardians. And so I'm taking the Brahmas, and so is my dad. Then next up, we have the over-under, which is 38 and a half points. I think Jack Cohen is absolutely going to light it up, along with Kalen Bellage on the ground game. And so I am taking the over on this one. And obviously, I think the Guardians will score some points to push it over the top. However, my dad is going to take the under. So, yeah. Next up, we got the Renegades versus the Houston Roughnecks. And this one I was very back and forth on. Definitely a tough selection, but let's get into it. So, the Renegades. Drew Plitt, good week last week. Threw one or two interceptions. You know, not the greatest, but he was 19 for 25 for 170 yards which isn't bad by any means. The running game was solid, not the greatest, but was still decent. And then as for the Roughnecks, obviously scored the most points uh, in week one, obviously held or had the best defense week one, held the Guardians to 12 points, but I think the Guardians were definitely struggling and having problems. 
But when you actually take a look into the defensive stats, they may have only given up 12 points. But when you look at it, the two quarterbacks combined for 300 yards had an above 60% completion percentage. I haven't actually figured it, but when you look at it, you can it, it's above 60%. Uh, gave up 80 yards on the ground. And this is to the Guardians team that nobody really thinks is very good. I actually uh, kind of thought that they were pretty good. But, you know, obviously nobody thinks that. So, um, yeah, I guess they're not good. Um, my bad. Kind of predicted them to be 6 or 4, but, you know, it's whatever. Okay, anyways, so... <laughs> um, so the Guardians, just not the greatest team, but their offense absolutely lit the Roughnecks up. Brandon Silvers threw some dangerous passes. He was, like, 26 for 42. Not the greatest. Threw for, like, 250 yards. That's pretty good. But, you know, at the same time... Those dangerous passes with Brandon Silvers, I just think the Arlington Renegades are definitely going to be a good, or definitely going to have a good enough defense to, you know, maybe get in the way of some of those passes. And I think those risks are going to turn into interceptions. I think the Renegades can definitely capitalize off of some of those. That's what they did against the Vipers, capitalized off of mistakes and misplays on defense. You know, got fumbles, I believe. I think they got a fumble, and I think they got an interception. Uh, I think that's how they scored two of their touchdowns, you know, to win the game. And so, you know, that's just how it goes. And, you know, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. The Roughnecks did not have much of a challenge against the Guardians. And I think they're really going to be overhyping themselves coming into this week against Bob Stoops. And I think Bob Stoops is going to get his guys ready. He's learned a lot from this past week about what his guys can and can't do. And I think the team's going to grow a lot more and be a little bit better. So I am taking the Arlington Renegades. And I know I've taken the away team every time, but that is too bad. Uh, however, my dad is going to take the Roughnecks at home, so that's cool. But next up, we got the spread and the over-under. So let's get into it. So obviously, the Roughnecks are favored by four. So I'm obviously going to take the Renegades here. Because, yeah, <laughs> um, you know, I already picked the Renegades, so, you know, why wouldn't I? Uh, but anyways, moving on to the over-under, which is 39 and a half points. 40 points, you know, I, it could happen, it could not happen. But I think the Renegades' run game is really going to take off early in this game. Uh, it didn't really happen too much against the Vipers, but I think... They'll be able to exploit it against the Roughnecks. I think Bob Stoops will certainly get it going this week now that he's had some time to learn, you know, about his team. And, you know, the Roughnecks, I don't think they'll be putting up as many points as they did last week. I think this defense will be a lot tougher than the Guardians. And I just think it'll be more of a defensive game. I think that's how the Renegades want to play the game. I, thought, I think they want to have huge time of possession. I think they just want to hold on to the ball, run the clock, play good defense, and get out with a win. And I think that's what they'll be able to do against the Roughnecks. Brandon Silvers threw 42 passes. I don't think he will be able to, you know, have the opportunity to even have that many passing plays. Which, I mean, I, <laughs> I don't know what I'm really saying at this point. But I think you guys understand it. Um, so, I'm going to take the under in this one. However, my dad is going to take the over. And he's also going to take the Renegades on his spread. And that will do it. I will have my week one recap on the XFL. Maybe tomorrow. If not, I probably won't ever do it. But... Just so you know, you guys could potentially watch it. So, yeah. Anyways, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. And I will see you guys next time.